Good morning, dirty, dirty gardeners. I'm Iron, also called Dirty Dragon, and I'm going to go through my garden today and do two separate videos. Um, the first one will be about deer proof in my garden, <laughs> plants for full sun. And then the second one will be deer proof plants for part shade. Um, so first what I'm going to do is just do a quick sweep of the garden with the camera and then I'll go and ID individual plants and at the end of the video I will put a list and you can check to see if that suits your needs. If you like them, at least you'll have the names of, um, of what I've gone through written down for you. So um, I'm going to turn the camera around and give you a really quick tour of the front garden. Okay. This is the deer buffet out front here. It's still filling in. This stumpery here is actually a new bed, so it hasn't fully fully filled in yet. But um, everything out here is about 95% deer proof. Um, as I've mentioned before, deer are assholes. So <laughs> um, you might find differently. It really, really is highly dependent on the deer, your location, the conditions outside. If it's like super dry and hot, they'll be much more inclined to eat crap that they wouldn't normally eat. Um, but this whole area here is not fenced and uh, really the only trouble I've mostly had is with babies um, coming to browse things that they've never tried before. Um, but apart from that, it is uh, not touched by any of the deer. Got this bed over here and then this bed over here. And this is all of the front, um, hot, dry, hand-watered only, bright, bright, bright sun, this spot. And the next part I'll do will be the part shade. This one here is Nepeta, which is also called cat mint. My cats crack out over this stuff, get all super nipped, roll around and, you know, make love with the, <laughs> the rocks and stuff. It smells very nice. It's a herb as well and gets little fuzzy, or not fuzzy, but uh, little purpley blue flowers on it which the, the bees also love, and the deer don't eat it. This funky one here is Nandina and uh, filamentosa. So it's got leaves that are thread-like, um, and it makes a really nice color in the fall, really good for drought, and the deer don't touch it at all. This is a Wajila called Rainbow, I think, it, what is it called? Rainbow, Magical Rainbow. Gorgeous foliage. Deers, this is also a... Um, a dwarf so it's not going to get much taller than a few feet and the deer don't eat it. This is lamb's ears, Stachys byzantina. Fuzzy! I love fuzzy plants. My little boy likes to walk around with these in his hand and rub them against his cheek because they're so soft and fuzzy. Bees also love this one and um, I guess the deer don't eat it because of the texture. <laughs> I can't say I would be fond of putting something super fuzzy in my mouth either. And it's also extremely drought tolerant. This one here is called Euphorbia Ascot Rainbow. As you can see, the foliage is a beautiful color. The flowers are quite pretty as well. Um, and it is a very well-behaved Euphorbia. Best color is after frost in the fall. And the deer don't eat it. Here is Lithodora, Grace Ward, in its full splendor. Very, very tough plant. Nice little ground cover or rock garden plant, and the deer don't touch it. This is Hypericum, which is um, St. John's wort relative. Um, beautiful new growth that uh, is kind of flame colored. It's amazing when the light comes through it from behind. And then it has um, lovely flowers and berries as well. And the deer don't eat it. This is geranium uh, Bevins variety. Nice sort of ground cover geranium, super easy to take care of. It'll tolerate just about any kind of soil and most light. Um, the, the leaves are scented also, which is really quite nice. If you brush against it, you can smell it and deer don't eat it. 
This is Tucrium, also called wood germander. This one is crispa, which means that the leaves are curly, which is quite pretty. It's a herb. A lot of herbs they won't eat. Another euphorbia. I have many euphorbias, so you can pretty much guarantee that the deer aren't going to eat the euphorbias. This one is called polychroma. This one here is called blackbird. And then over here I have a lighter one that's uh, variegated. I can't remember what that one's called. Um, snow or something. I don't know. But anyway, all the euphorbias are good. The deer don't eat them. Here we have erisimum, wallflower. Very nice scent. And drought, drought, drought is good. Like it likes that. And um, I've never seen the deer even try it. This is golden oregano. Super pretty. Tumbling over a rock wall. Um, of course, it's uh, edible as well. It's, you can use it for cooking. And the bees like the flowers. And of course, because it's a herb, the deer don't touch it. This is an Artemisia. I think this one is called Powys Castle. Can't remember exactly, but um, in any case, all of the Artemisias are um, deer proof. They won't touch them at all. They have a nice scent as well when you disturb the leaves. And their flowers are pretty insignificant for the most part. They're just small and white. It's more the foliage because it's got silvery foliage. This one here is particularly soft and fuzzy. It feels, it feels velvety. So Artemisia. This is Achillea, which is also called Yarrow. Um, you can get tons of different colors of it. This one happens to be, I think, like a terracotta color, which is really pretty. Um, nice foliage. The ferny foliage is super, super pretty and attractive, even when it's not flowering. The deer don't like it. Yay! This one here is Monarda, bee balm. This is just a typical red one that grows really, really tall. Um, super pretty bracts and flowers smells really nice uh, I think you can use it for tea or something I'm not exactly sure don't quote me on that but um, it's it just has a really lovely scent and the deer don't touch it grasses you can pretty much guarantee they're not going to eat grasses of any kind so you can put whatever you like in your garden where the where the deer are there's a lot of ornamental grasses out there that are really really beautiful then it totally depends on the effect you want, whether you want fall color, whether you have like uh, dry soil or wet soil. And um, yeah, there's tons of tons of options and the deer never eat them. This is an eryngium called agavifolium. Um, this specific variety is, uh, is agavifolium because the leaves look like an agave cactus. Uh, they grow tall spikes with kind of yellow spiky button flowers and um, really, really good for hot, hot, dry situations, just like up front here. And the deer never touch them. They're, they're really, 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 really spiny. Okay, here we have peon, peony. Um, obviously, nice colors. You can get tons of different colors. Um, you, can, uh, you can pretty much put them in any kind of soil. I think they're pretty fine with anything except maybe like a pond. <laughs> Very drought tolerant. And a uh, nice fall color, too, on some of the leaves, depending on the variety. And the deer don't touch them. This is Rose Campion. Really hot pink flowers. Quite abundant. It will self-seed like a mofo. But I love it. It's super easy to pull, and I think it's just really, really pretty. The foliage is lovely, of course, because it's got this soft, um, almost hairy, not hairy, but like, like velvety, I guess texture to it. Anyway, um, so that one is good too. The deer don't touch it. This is Aster. Nice fall flower. Tons of color um, for late summer and uh, you can get a variety of different colors. So anything that you would like in your color palette. Um, and the deer don't eat it. Okay, so here we have a bearded iris. The deer don't touch these ones, nor do they touch the Siberian iris. They will eat the little Dutch iris, the flowers. They don't touch the foliage, but these ones are perfectly safe. I have tons of them out front here, and I'm kind of stoked to see this one bloom. Come on, focus for me. There we go. Almost there. Deer don't like them. Yay. And they're also drought tolerant, which is awesome. 
This here is goldenrod and uh, it, I believe, is a native. Um, this one grows about maybe 24 inches tall and has a lovely fireworks display of bright, bright yellow in the late summer. Uh, bees love it and deer don't touch it. Here we have foxglove. Another one that's, um, it's not native, but you find it in nature a lot and it's extraordinarily toxic, deadly. So the deer don't touch it, although I have had them eat some of my toxic plants to the ground. So I don't know if uh, maybe it was a baby and probably got really sick. The adults would never touch these guys. So, And you can get a number of different colors and they're pretty easy to grow from seed as well. Um, I grow a number of varieties that are a little more unique with orange and brown flowers that are uh, pretty cool. So, This is Serastium tomentosum. It's a uh, ground cover. Some people find it kind of invasive. If you grow it near your lawn, um, probably not a good idea because wherever it touches the ground, it'll root. So it's hard to get it out of there. I have it growing in a bowl. <laughs> Um, and I don't find it difficult to get rid of at all. It's very well contained and well behaved. It has white little flowers that look like uh, little daisies, I guess. Um, and of course you can see here the pretty uh, fuzzy white foliage. That, that, again, the deer don't like textured food like that. <laughs> so it's safe too. The short sedums, the ground cover sedums, not the tall ones like Autumn Joy, but like this one here. This is Angelina. Um, that's Kamchatkam and Semper Vivums, also called hens and chicks. Those are all deer proof. They won't touch them at all. And they make really pretty flowers uh, depending on the time of the year. Some of them are white, most of them are yellow, some are pink. All of them are safe from deer. Okay, so this one is an Allium, Allium Christophii particularly. It grows in the shape of a fireworks. Very, very pretty. About um, the width of my hand and in a, in a globe shape. And then on the outside is a bunch of tiny little stars, purple stars. Very, very pretty flower. And all alliums are deer proof. They have never touched any of them. They're in the wild garlic um, onion family. So they have a pretty Pretty hefty flavor. Can you imagine a deer with garlic breath? <laughs> what? <laughs> no kisses for you tonight. <laughs> These beautiful feathery things here are an annual called Nigella damascena. Um, the foliage is stunning as you can see, but the flowers and then the seed pods are even more so. They are tremendous and they come in colors. Uh, they, they grow between like white to pink and purple and blue all within the same like uh, inch <laughs> of soil so I'm not sure what determines the color of them um, but anyway they are absolutely stunning and the deer don't touch them this is another slutty corridalis this one is corridalis lutea yellow corridalis same exact thing as the white one. Um, seeds around. I've got it in so many places and I just love it. Uh, it needs almost no water at all. These are poppies, surely poppies to be exact, but um, all poppies I have found are deer proof. They won't eat these ones, the surely poppies, they won't eat the opium poppies, which is Papaver somniferum. They won't eat Papaver oriental, which is the um, uh, Asian, uh, what do they call it, uh, oriental poppy. Um, they won't eat the Icelandic poppies, so you can sow any of them with confidence. And they're really, really tough. They don't, uh, they don't need much of anything. Um, one other thing to consider is the Papaver somniferum. When they uh, make their pods, the pods are very attractive as well. Um, they will all self sow. Alrighty then, so that's a whole bunch, a whole bunch of plants for you to choose from for full sun um, that are deer proof and deer, deer, deer resistant. Okay, we're gonna say deer resistant, not deer proof, because you just never know with those guys. Um, 
but it should give you a ton of options. Um, the list is coming up in just a second. So peace out.